As I get closer to the end of watching all these Disney sequels, I can say that, honestly, the most entertaining out of all of them is Cinderella 3. Yeah, I know, right? The third Cinderella movie? That's ridiculous. Look at this opening. It doesn't even look like it's gonna be anything. It looks like a sequel even worse than the previous sequel. But when I was telling people I was gonna do all these Disney sequels, what I kept hearing over and over is that Cinderella 3 is good. Wait till you get to Cinderella 3, that's a good one. And for the most part, they're kind of right. Are there problems? Yeah, I guess that's sort of to be expected with any of the Disney sequels. Is it my favorite? No, but again, it's, how do I put this, easily the most fun. Like I said before, it opens up kind of corny and chintzy with a goofy little song, not really that impressive, but suddenly the villains return, the stepmother and the stepsisters. They come across the fairy godmother's magic wand, turn her to stone, and start going back in time to make it that the stepsister is the one that has the shoe that fits. Thus, everything is altered, Cinderella is left in the dust, and she doesn't have her happily ever after. The villains are taken to the palace, they hypnotize the prince into thinking that the sister was the one they fell in love with, and it's up to Cinderella to sneak in there and convince him what's really going on without getting caught by the guards or the evil stepmother. On the one hand, this sounds incredibly forced and silly, and yeah, I guess it kind of is, but for such a forced and silly idea, they do everything that they can with it. They realize that the most interesting characters are the villains, and there's a lot of time focused on them. Look at the drawings on them, look at these close-ups, they are just so devious and they love every second that they're on screen, and so do we! I remember there's a scene where Cinderella sneaks in as a servant and she has her face covered and the stepmother is sort of looking at this reflection in the water and she can kind of see her face and I actually went, oh no, which is amazing. I actually said, oh no, during a Cinderella film, let alone a sequel, that's insane. But on top of that, they actually give a lot of characters who didn't have much development in the other films a lot more development. The king, for example, is more than just a guy who's bouncing up and down saying, eh, give me grandchildren. They make him this really sentimental guy who lost his wife years ago, and so he's passing on this piece of jewelry to the now daughter-in-law, and it's actually really sweet. One of the stepsisters is given a lot more development too, and what makes it so clever is that it actually ties into the second film, Cinderella 2. Yeah, that stupid sequel that nobody cared about. They actually have some things that tie into it. Not only is her character given a lot of depth and a story arc, but they even have characters from the second film that were introduced in this one as well. Remember the woman in charge of the servants? Of course you don't, because nobody remembers the second film, but she's in this. What an incredible touch of detail. Even the prince, who had maybe one line of dialogue in the first movie and I don't know, maybe two in the second one, he was clearly just the eye candy, has a lot more character in this. Well. Okay, not a lot more character, but certainly there is a personality there. He's general, nice, and charming, but you do get to know him a little bit more. Enough that you want to see him get with the right person. The animation is fantastic, and what's so great about it is that it doesn't necessarily try to recreate the same animation from the first film. Bambi 2 kind of fell into that trap, and while it wasn't really bad or anything, you're just constantly reminded that this isn't its own thing. This, even though it's a sequel, does feel like its own thing. The imagery gets a lot more creepy and a lot more creative. There's a scene where she throws Cinderella into this giant pumpkin and it's all gross and disgusting inside. And these vines just grab this horse and wrap around it and then she turns the cat into this evil servant who's laughing maniacally as he's gonna ride it off a cliff and it's just crazy. It's something that you want to see in a fairy tale sequel. It gets a little darker, it gets a little crazier, and it gets a lot more fun. It's like half Cinderella and half Tim Burton. It's just so enjoyable to view. So, okay, this movie sounds great. Is it great? Well, there are a few little problems that hold it back from being a complete piece. And I don't think it's just nitpicking. The biggest one is Cinderella herself, which is not to say the character is done horribly. I mean, they actually animate her very well and the pacing is good. And there's even a scene when she finds out that everything's been changed where you don't even see her reaction. You just see her place her hand on the door, and that's kind of all you need. Little moments like that are really, really good. But the problem is, in the story, it's kind of like the Little Mermaid. She doesn't learn anything. She doesn't go through an arc. She just kind of wants to get something, and she gets it. I guess it's just kind of a distracting contrast when you see what these other characters are going through and all the changes that they have going on. 
On top of that, some of the morals are a little weird. Like, there's this ongoing thing that when you touch a person's hand, you immediately know if you're in love. And, yeah, I know, Disney, fairy tales, they kind of teach even weirder lessons than that if you really think about it, but I don't know, that seemed particularly odd. For a movie that's really trying to fix the dated problems of the first film, it seems like that was something that was clearly really distracting that they maybe should have taken another look at. On top of that, this movie has three climaxes. Yeah, there's one where the prince saves her, then there's one where she saves herself, and then there's one where she saves him, and it's just kind of all over the place. But they're all kind of fun, too. It's like all this green stuff flying everywhere and this choir going, oh! It's something you can clearly tell the animators and the writers and the directors were having fun doing, and we feel that fun. The hard work and effort is clearly there in a project where it didn't need to be there. They went 110% on something that clearly was just meant to be thrown out really fast, but they really tried, and you can tell they really tried. But yeah, those problems I mentioned before are still legitimate problems. They do kind of focus a little too much on the side characters, and yeah, I know the first film you could argue that too, but the center was still around her need, her want, her going through this endurance to get what was needed. Working hard and finally getting that reward. Here, I guess it's just kind of the same thing, working hard and getting that reward, but we already saw that, so why is that interesting? But in my opinion, the rest is so much fun and so crazy and so enjoyable that I can kind of overlook it, and I think a lot of other people overlook it too. All I can say is what everyone's been saying about it is strangely right. It is really entertaining, and I highly recommend it. I can't say it's perfect, I can't say it's a Disney classic or anything, but it's just a ton of surreal joy. I like how they took something that was pretty pointless and even kind of a dumb idea and turned it into something that was just kind of cool and focused on the elements that were the most enjoyable from the first film. If you want a Disney sequel that doesn't need to exist but is still really, really neat, Cinderella 3 is bizarrely enough the one to check out. was a typical teenager. In trouble at home. You are skating on thin ice, pal. In trouble at school. You'll find a property. And in trouble most of the time. Hey, that was pretty good. You guys are getting a lot faster. Your hours are 46. There's gotta be a wash on the guesses. Until he met a girl unlike any other. It wasn't exactly love at first sight. She thinks. She feels things. I mean, if we don't help her, who will? Look, I wanted you out, too. You can talk to him. She doesn't belong in there. Family Entertainment presents an adventure that will make your heart race and your spirits soar. Born to be wild. 